nuclear, double nuclear launch detected. One over here is a Templar. Oh, feeds backs the ghost. Very, very nice right there. But is this one going to get caught? No, it doesn't. All the cannons got killed off. And uh, a preliminary scan up here reveals that there are still more cannons up there as well. So, you know, I actually now realize why Xyopros decided to build cannons. is because he doesn't want to get nuked. Uh, he got nuked last game. Sick of it. Decided, you know what? I'm building cannons. Cannot get nuked anymore. But now his cannon defense has fallen. And it looks like OGS Top is going to push forward. Top here with uh, not the best upgrades. But his Vikings are doing so much damage to the Colossus. This is amazing damage. The Ghost now landing their EMP Shockwave. Look at all those Templars. No energy. Oh my goodness. Zio Pros in a ton of trouble. More Templars warping in. And I think those Templars warping at that very last second may have saved Zio Pros. This is an amazing battle. Probes now running away from the destroyed Nexus. And the Nexus now trying to rebuild, but OGS top, the damage has been done. He killed off the Nexus. He's gonna unload, uh, he's gonna load up whatever is surviving. Oh, feedback, feedback, feedback! Nice. <laughs> so that was a double feedback actually from the Templar, and it just killed off two of those dropships. And uh, that right there, that was StarCraft at its finest, ladies and gentlemen, but I really think that OGS top, just like last game, at an advantage. As you guys can see right now, he has a bigger um, army, 138 over 119. If you look at the income tab, we can see that uh, OGS top also has more economy, 70 over 56. So Zio Pro is really fighting that uphill battle because he note he doesn't have the gold expansion. He's basically at what? Uh, well, he's about to get five bases, uh, the, the fourth and fifth up, up once again. But really, he's facing off against a six base Terran, which is just unheard of. That is just ridiculous amounts of income. I mean, if we look, if we look at the army tab, I think OGS Top should be nearing max now. He's got so many production facilities. I'm surprised that um, he's not maxed yet. I guess he's not building anything under these drop ships. But uh, nonetheless, it looks like we do have once again another nuclear launch. This time, it, it is going to be canceled by these uh, forces at the front door, but at the same time, OGS top making a drop here. Templar landing a storm, but Marauders is very, very resilient to that storm. And oh, the robotics facility gets taken out. Nice play. No more Colossus can come out until that robotics facility is rebuilt. And OGS top doing a lot of nice micro here. And wow, he is actually possibly going to, nope, that last, uh, that last Colossus of bla laser blade with plus three weapons just demolished those Marauders. But, you know, every game I've seen between these two players, OGS Top has been the one who's been aggressive. And really, that's how you win in StarCraft. You have to be aggressive. You cannot be passive and hope to win the game. You can't hope to defend and defend and defend. That's what Zyopros does, but every single time he plays like that, he just falls further and further behind. So, here we go. OGS Top, once again, making another drop. Um, a ton of Marauders, and it looks like he's launching a nuke here all the way on this side as well. So an, an intense double attack once again for OGS Top. Is Zyopros aware enough to deal with this? It looks like he's gonna kill the Ghost with Storm and an Observer, but at the same time he loses his Nexus, so he was not fast enough to deal with a two-pronged attack. So insane right now, OGS Top is just working this Protoss player. And, I, I mean, I, I, I gotta say, Zyopros is a great player. I'm, I'm watching him play right now. He is, no doubt, an extremely good Protoss. But is he good enough to topple a member of OGS? I, I, I don't know. This game is just, <laughs> it's just getting worse and worse as it goes on for the Protoss player. But we'll see what happens. All right, had to take him sip of water there anyways let's go ahead and take uh, go back to the all view for both players it looks like there is going to be a lone marauder getting dropped off here marauder is actually a very very cool unit they're gonna shoot a couple of rockets at that templar and does not manage to kill it so Zyapros does take that out quite easily but at the same time here ogs top now making another menacing move he's got such a large army of marauders ghosts only a handful of vikings down doesn't really have to uh deal with the what are they called? The the Colossus all that much anymore since he's killed off so many of them. And honestly, Zyopros' army, the majority of it is just tucked away right here. But 
Notice that because Xyopros has had to defend against constant drop harass, he's just leaving Templars and units at the back of each of his bases because he knows that if he doesn't, he risks losing a ton of his production facilities. So he's forced to split his army apart, and this is this is exactly what I've been saying. He's playing defensive style, and that just doesn't work against offensive players. Now, um, Oh wow, OGS top here is building dual command centers at the, the crossroads where the gold expansions are and you can bet your butt these are not to mine minerals, those are to build planetary fortresses and they become super strong defensive structures and make it almost impossible for the Protoss player to, to penetrate. Um, at the same time it looks like OGS top gonna be dropping off more marauders once again, will he manage to kill the Templar off? It looks like yes he will, but honestly... The, the, these two buildings right here, the double planetary fortress at each of these roads, wow, that is going to be one hell of a day for the Protoss uh, Zyopros to defend. And look at this, even another PF up here as well. That is just so brutal. Anyways, we have another nuke coming down. A couple of SCVs saying, I don't want to live anymore, so they go and do their own thing. But uh, I'm very interested to see what's up with this nuke. We have a second nuclear launch also coming in as well. Down goes the nuke only doing a little bit of damage. This new this ghost actually gets fried. Both ghosts get get fried. This one gets uh, killed off before the nuke could land. So good defense. Good defense right there from Xyopros. I'm, uh, I'm happy that he didn't allow himself to, to get nuked like he did last game. Um, not nearly as bad at least. And it looks like right now, since it's such a late, late game, both players are actually throwing harvesters away at each other. Um, <laughs> another nuke gets cancelled right there by feedback, but um, you guys might be wondering why would you do this? Well, the reason is if you've got all the ma the bases on the map, you really don't need your harvesters anywhere anymore. You might as well sacrifice them and just pump out more army units because if you don't have all your army uh, your army as big as possible and some of it's taken up by um, taken up by harvesters, then that can make a huge difference in the late late little super late game. So anyways, it looks like these Marauders are um, going to get taken out. Nice feedback from Zyopros to, to finish off the dropship first. And it looks like two dropships here are going to come in. Is Zyopros prepared? Wow, that is some insane <laughs> awareness. How did he see that in time? These players are just so damn good. That was incredible. I'm, I'm so surprised. But Zyopros once again defends against another dropship harass. And things are looking a little bit better for the Protoss army now. Because you have to remember, a maxed out Protoss army is stronger than a maxed out Terran army. But, um, OGS Top doesn't really need to attack. He doesn't need to extend himself. Just stay next to these planetary fortresses and defend all day long. Tell the Protoss player, yo, it's your turn to attack. Ball's in your court, buddy. And really, even though Protoss has a stronger army composition in the late, late game, they still have to deal with these planetary fortresses, which I think sort of evens out the field. Um, here we go, some Vikings and tanks, Ghosts also trying to push away these uh, Colossus. Obviously, um, the, the PFs are outranged by Colossus, so I don't know, I don't know, I don't, I don't know how this is going to work. The dynamics of this game have just com are completely bewildering me right now. I honestly would not be surprised to see some kind of a late game air transition into battle cruisers motherships and carriers uh, who cares I, I would love to see some awesome late game units but nonetheless look at those EMPs beautiful EMPs getting laid down on the Protoss ball and I think a lot of those Templars just lost a crap ton of energy but uh, yeah it looks like Xyopros now has the gold expansion um, if we look at the bank of Xyopros he's at 5,000 4,000 which is just insane and OGS top is at also 5,000 3,000 so really, at this point, it's tough to call. I think both players might actually be relatively even. Uh, these Vikings doing some good damage to the Colossus. And obviously, this late game uh, tech switch into siege tanks uh, makes it very difficult for Protoss to break, along with the PFs. So uh, yeah, here we go. Another push here. I did hear a nuclear strike somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Where is the nuclear strike? I, I have no idea. Oh, there's the nuclear strike landing down on the probes and a second nuke coming down. The ghosts here using the Zelnaga watchtowers and this is the one thing that Protoss players hate 
dealing with against Terran on this map. Once it gets to the super late game, if a Terran can control this area with tanks and they get the Zelnaga watchtowers, they can launch nukes all day long on these probes and really there's not much that the Protoss player can do unless the Protoss just switches to late game air mode with mass void rays. But uh, I don't see that happening. These probes getting shelled away. Uh, right now, OGS Top denying the gold expansion to his opponent. Such smart play. And once again, we have another nuke coming down. This nuke will not be able to cancel these Robo Facilities. They should be able to live through it. Here we go, here we go. Is it going to kill the Robo Facilities? Nope. Not enough damage. So anyways, meanwhile, another massive attack here from both players. Some SCVs sacrificing themselves. The Vikings doing good sick damage to these Colossus. And oh my god, we have another nuke from OGS Top. This game has just gone completely out of control. I think that Top really wants to kill off these buildings. Down comes the nuke. And now the Ghost free to launch yet another nuke. Look at the production tab, ladies and gentlemen. And you guys can see four nuclear missiles getting, uh, getting built right now. So OGS Top here really showing that late game Terran versus Protoss. You, you can use nukes to maximum effectiveness. It is certainly not a gimmick strategy. It is extremely powerful. And OGS Top has done a wonderful job of showing us the power of the Terran uh, arsenal and the Terran weaponry. Once again, another missile coming down. Um, the Protoss ball here. I think Zyopros is just completely in shock. He just doesn't know what to do. Is the Templar going to get the feedback in time? Oh my god, that was so close. Landing the feedback, warping in the Templar. And that's the one thing Zyopros has done so well this game. He's been able to feed back ghosts before the nukes have landed. Um, several, several times, in fact. So very, very nice job thus far. We can see that... Zyopros is still unsure of himself, doesn't really know what to do. And really, when you get into this super late game position, I honestly would say go for a mothership. Um, you need some way to mobilize your forces, and how nice would it be to just float the mama ship over this, the Terran main and then just drop all your forces? Um, unfortunately, I don't think that Zyopros is thinking about the, the mama ship. It looks like the Templar here just feed back the ghost once again. And uh, some, <laughs> what are these marines doing? Decided to just run their way into the Protoss main. And one marine barely survives the ordeal. The probe is going to come over here and it should be able to finish that marine quite easily. So, <laughs> or is it? Oh my goodness, that was really close. But anyways, we have another big battle here. Vikings on the Colossus. Good storms over the Vikings! These Vikings, if they go down, then OGS Top is in a lot of trouble. Um, but luckily, he falls back to his line of siege tanks. And he's able to defend against that quite easily. Now, I want to draw attention to the 50-50 line across the map. You guys draw a line from the bottom left to the top right on the mini-map. You can see that it's the Great Wall of China. We have missile turrets to defend against drops. As you guys can see, a planetary fortress, a huge line of siege tanks at the center. And as we continue on, more PFs, more missile turrets. It is just the impossible, mission impossible for Zyopros to try to break against that. Once again, we have another nuke. Feedback being used again, though. So, very well played there. And yet again, OGS Top trying to catch the Protoss army out of position with a nuke. Now, if, if for whatever reason, o Zyopros makes a, 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 a big mistake and he walks his way into a nuclear missile, then I think that that would just be the most epic finish to this game, although it would be probably be quite one-sided. Nonetheless, here comes an attack from Zyopros. Both armies, keep in mind, are, near, are, are pretty much maxed, so either player can win this game. It's just going to come down to posturing and how they use their units. Um, the Vikings here getting whittled down. It's honestly anyone's game to take at this point. I, I would still give the slight advantage to OGS top because he's just got this this impenetrable wall but um the Protoss player can win he's just gonna need to think of some ingenious strategy here if he wants to get back in this game and uh, or at least wants to win this game in the long run now uh note Zyopros has 10,000 minerals 6,000 gas OGS top actually has 11,000 minerals and 2,000 gas so there's actually something that we do have to be careful about here um the fact that uh, OGS Top actually is running out of gas, and gas is going to be the defining resource in this game. I think the, the nuke there was just cancelled, but... Oh, nice sniper there. 
But I want to say that gas is going to be the limiting factor here. Um, OGS Top still has a couple of refineries mining. He still has quite a bit banked, I would say. Yeah, he's still got a lot of gas left over. But the Protoss player has a lot more. And why I say this is a problem is because OGS Top has been using nuke after nuke, and nukes are not free. They actually cost 100 gas a pop. So every time he nukes, he's actually spending his future resources if he's not doing significant damage. And I have to say, even though the nukes have been impressive this game, a lot of them have been hitting air. They've just not been doing the damage they need to do. And OGS Top might be uh, wasting his most valuable resource uh, the, the Vespine gas. Look at that gas. It's now at 1,500. So this could be big trouble here. Here comes Zyopros. He's going to try to trade armies. And honestly, he can afford to trade because he has a lot more gas in the bank. It looks like... Oh, Immortal barely makes it out of there. And it looks like Zyopros there are doing a pretty decent trade. 162. OGS top at 193. Oh, maybe not the best trade. Uh, I think the Protoss army just kind of just lo lost most of its units in that attack. And once again, we have another nuke landing. The storm will kill off the ghost before...